I'm going to start by creating a new folder where I want to create my SharePoint framework project. And then I'm going to move into that folder. I'm going to start by launching the Yeoman SharePoint Framework Generator. Now, when prompted, I'm going to go ahead and just accept the default uh, solution name. I'm going to choose the type of component I want to create is an adaptive card extension. And then I'm going to choose the image card template as my uh, template I want to start with. And I'm going to name this my ACE image viewer. Now, after provisioning the folders required for the project, the generator is then going to install all the dependency packages by running npm install automatically. And when npm completes downloading all the dependencies, it's going to then open the project. I'm going to then open up the project in Visual Studio. Now, this ACE component that I'm going to create in this exercise is going to retrieve and display images that are taken by a Mars rover using one of the open API endpoints from uh, NASA. So if we take a look at this, the go to api.nasa.gov, we can see we have a bunch of APIs. So if I go jump down to browsing the APIs, there's one here called the Mars Rover Photos where I can issue uh, a bunch of requests. Now these APIs are all public, they're all accessible and they are all uh, freely available as well. Um, one of the things with them is there are limits associated uh, with them as far as uh, the API goes or requests that you're gonna make. Um, we're going to use the demo API key. If I scroll down to the bottom of the page, or if I go to here, we're going to use the demo key, but just know there are rate limits associated with the demo key. Um, you can always create your own account. It's free to create an account uh, at the time of the recording to, if you need uh, to go above these different requests. But we're just going to use the demo key uh, for our purposes in this demo. Now, to call the endpoint, I'm going to need an API key. I'm also going to need to know what Mars rover I want to retrieve the photos for. And then I need to know the Mars Sol, which is a solar day on Mars, which we have Earth days. That's what we call a day on Mars is a Sol. Um, and we're going to need that to retrieve images for it. All of these properties are going to be public and configurable properties for our ACE, uh, our ACE component. So what I'm going to do is first go through and set those up. So I'm going to jump over I'm going to jump back over into Visual Studio Code and I'm going to go into my extension that I've created or that my project, uh, the, the Yeoman Generator created for me. And I'm going to scroll down to our properties here and I'm going to have a property for the NASA underscore API key, which is a string. I'm going to do the same thing for a uh, the rover that's selected. And then I'm also going to need the... Um, the soul, the day, to fetch the, the items for. Now, let's go add these items to our property pane. So I'm going to come over here to our property pane. And the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to update it to have to use a drop-down list. So we're going to need to pull in our property pane drop-down item here. And one of the first things we'll do is that when the property pane is defined, when it's passed in, I'm going to want to be able to pass in the actual, the, the currently selected rover to default it. So I'm going to say selected rover is a string and it'll default to the curiosity rover. Like that. Now, the next thing I'm going to want to do is I want to go through and add a bunch of fields uh, to support these different properties. So to save a little bit of time, I'm just going to paste these in. So I'll add a comma there and add them in. So now we have one for the NASA API key, the Mars Rover, which is a bunch of drop down options with the selected item is the one that we are passing in. Um, and then the Martian Soul uh, as well that I'm going to want to set. Now, that little enhancement that I added about the currently selected item right here, I need to go back to my extension and I need to make a change to one of the methods here when I'm getting the deferred, yeah, the property pane right here. I want to actually pass back, pass into this um, the, the currently selected rover. Now, the next thing I want to do is add some default values for all these different properties when the item gets added to uh, a page. So I'm going to go over to the manifest file for my project. That's just the extension.manifest.json. I'm going to come down here into the properties 
And I'm gonna go ahead and add in a new property, a new collection of properties at the end for those three values that we just defined. So we're gonna to default to the Mars Day 1000. Uh, we're gonna set the rover to Curiosity and use the demo um, API key. Now, the next thing we need is something to help us make calls to that REST service. And we're just gonna create a new, a new um, uh, service here called our NASA service.ts. And I'm just gonna paste some code in here. And you're welcome to go take a look at this, but uh, in your own time, but all it's really doing is just exporting a single method here called fetch rover photos and an actual photo um, and making a call using the different values that we pass in um, to get the request, uh, to get images from the endpoint. Now, the next thing we're going to do is with the public properties and the helper service created, I now need to update the component's state that's used to display the data in the component. So I'm going to come back to my extension, scroll up to the top, and let's go to our state interface. And actually, before I do that, let's add in a import statement or two. I want to import uh, from the at Microsoft slash SP low dash low dash subset. I want to pull in a method called is empty. We're going to use that. And then I'll we'll also do an import statement uh, from the NASA service that we created because I wanna pull in a couple values here, like our fetch, the photos, and the interface for an actual photo. Okay, all those are just saying, these squigglies are just warning us that we're not using it yet. That's fine because we're still coding. Now, let's now go down to the state and let's add in a couple properties um, to keep track of what photo we're looking at. So we have the current index, which will be a number, and then we're also gonna have a bunch of rover photos that we're gonna have is our collection, which are Mars rover photos, right? The next thing we'll do is we'll come down into our on init method to initialize it because we wanna set our current index um, equal to zero and our rover photos to an empty array. Now, in the on init method, I also wanna go through and fetch all those images from the API if I have all the values that are, that are set that I'm expecting for my properties. So I'm gonna do that by setting it like this. And it looks like Mars Soul, why isn't that working here? Oh, because we want this to be Mars. We don't want this to be a Mars, we don't want it to be a NASA Soul, we want it to be a Mars Soul. Uh, and then we also have to make this an await, uh, async, sorry, async keyword. Uh, let's go back and double check and make sure we're setting those properties right. So we wanted this to be Yep, there's the Mars Soul right there. That's what we wanted. And over here, oh, yep, that's not right. Mars Soul right there. That's what we want. Okay. So now we've got all of our um, we've got all of our values are now being set uh, in our are being initialized here. Now let's handle one more scenario. What happens if the user changes? the selected rover or the selected Mars day um, in the property pane. We want to go fetch the images uh, from and put them in the state for the new values. So I'm going to do this by adding a new method. Um, and we did this in our last demo. So I'm just going to paste this in. And all this does is it checks to see if we change the rover or if we change the sol, then I want to go change all the values uh, that we got back. So just checking either one of those things. Now, now that the component is set up to get photos from the REST API and store them in the state, I can now update the rendering to display the photos. So let's do this by updating our card view first. So in my card view, let's go add in a reference to an I action arguments. We're gonna need that um, because we're gonna have an action statement we're gonna be handling. And the next thing I wanna do is update the buttons that are displayed in the card view. Now, again, we can return uh, one two or no buttons. And if I wanna show two buttons, like a previous and a next button, when I'm not at the start or the end of the collection photos, I can do that. I'm gonna add these buttons here by simply just replacing the values that we have in our existing card buttons method or the existing code. So what does this do? Well, I'm gonna first have nothing that I'm returning back. I'm gonna to check to see, are we at the, at the beginning of the cards? Um, or are we at the very end of the cards? And that's just gonna be going back and forth, either cycling 
uh, to um, previous or next, which is very similar to how we did in our last demo, but we're just shortening up uh, what those buttons look like. And then at the end, I'm checking to see if there are, if we're the length of them, if there's no uh, cards um, or if there's no images for the selected soul, then I'm gonna return undefined. Otherwise, I'm gonna return, uh, if the length of them is just equal to one, then I'm just gonna show the first button. Otherwise, if it's not equal to one, I'm gonna show both previous and next, okay? So we have multiple buttons that we can show. Now let's update our data method, our data accessor method with some code here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this return, replace this return statement with the following. So what does this do? What this is going to do is I'm checking to see if I have a rover set and if, or if I don't have a rover set or if I don't have the Martian soul set, then I'm gonna say, I'm gonna display some sort of an error message here. I'm gonna say, you gotta select the rover and a day or soul to display photos. And so I'm just gonna give them a bit of a warning here. Um, notice here, I can also set up for accessibility. I can also set the alt text of the image. And then this image I'm using is just a picture, uh, a default picture of Mars uh, from uh, Wikipedia, like this. Okay, so just giving credit to the to Wikipedia there. So otherwise, if I do have those two values set, then I'm gonna go fetch the, the rover um, out and I'm also gonna fetch the rover's image out. And for the rover, what I'm doing is I'm just getting, taking the first letter of the rover's uh, name and just capitalizing it. Uh, and then for the image, I'm gonna go fetch that image. And then I'm gonna return back the primary text saying which rover and which day. The image URL, I'll pass in the URL to the image. I'll pass in some alt text and I'll set the title to whatever the name of our component is. Now, the last thing that I wanna do is I wanna update the um, the on view card select the card selected uh, uh, button here. So this is when you actually select the card. What do I want to display? Well, I'm going to display a quick view, but the quick view I want to display is going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to have this be our quick view, and for the view, it's going to be our quick view registry ID. And then finally, I want to have I want to I want to update what happens when they click one of my buttons to go either uh, previous or next. So I'll do that by just pasting in this on action. That'll do the same thing that we did in our previous uh, demo that we saw earlier. Uh, and then in this case here, I don't think we're using our strings. We're not, so I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that line right there. Okay, so now our card view is done. The last thing we need to do is we need to go update our quick view. So I'm gonna do that by coming over to our quick view class which is in our quick view folder. I'm gonna add an import statement for my um, interface or for my uh, NASA uh, service handler that we've created. Uh, I'm gonna remove our existing data that we have here. I don't need this. And instead what we're gonna do is I'm gonna replace the interface that we're defining here. I'm gonna replace that with the, with the Mars with the Mars rover, rover that we want to display because we're going to be displaying back the actual um, icon that we got back from um, the API. So I'm just fetching it back this way. Now for my data, what I'm going to do for the, for the data is I want to return back the currently selected item. So I'm going to set, I'm going to return the state of the rover photos using this.state.current index. So there's the actual photo that we're going to return back. And then again, we're not using our string, so we'll just delete that reference there so the builds will work. And then finally, we wanna display, change the way our card is gonna be rendered. And we do that, as you saw from our previous demo, from the adaptive card that we're gonna define. So here, what we're gonna have is we're gonna show the image of our, um, of the, from the rover. We're gonna display a little bit of text about the image. And then I'm gonna set up a uh, text block with a fact set. And what that's gonna do is just write out some details about the actual photo um, that was taken. So let's go ahead and build this and see it work. So we'll test all of our code by saying gulp serve, no browser. And it looks like everything worked. Okay, so now that we've got it running, let's come over here and let's into our uh, workbench. And I'm going to add in my adaptive card or my, my adaptive card extension that we created called my image viewer. And here we can see that the, the initial experience here is showing the image from Mars and it's saying that we have to select the rover and a soul to display photos. 
So if I come over here into edit mode, or sorry, I want to stick in edit mode and let's go select edit mode. And we can see we're using the demo API key. What I need to, what I need to do here is I need to add in the salt. And once I've gone through and I've added in 1000, what we can see is that it's already fetched an image here from the um, uh, from that day for the Curiosity Rover. So if I put this in uh, display mode, I can then start to cycle through these different images. And if I select the actual card, it's going to show me the um, quick view of our image, giving me the ID of the image, as well as some details about the image as well. So in this demo, we saw how to create a SharePoint framework adaptive card extension with the image card template that's going to display images taken by one of the cameras of this on the selected Mars rover.